Not all at once, guys. I understand. I just talked to y'all, so I get it. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Coach, you, you've had uh, you had the most of your newcomers for bowl practice, but I know bowl practice is a little different because you're preparing for an opponent. This is more about individuals and them. What is your early evaluation of those newcomers when it's been about themselves the last two days? Yeah, just their retention. You know, a lot of times when freshmen come in, one of the hardest things for those guys to make in terms of adjustments is uh, just the mental capacity and what it takes. You know, obviously, you know, our playbook is a lot more advanced than some of the high schools that they, that they came from. Um, so those guys' ability to grasp what we're trying to get accomplished, you know, from an X's and O perspective, and then just their, um, you know, sheer tenacity. You know, a lot of those guys, you know, come from high-level programs, and you can tell just the way they carry themselves and how hard they're working to this point. So. Um, we're, we're extremely pleased with them. You know, we think most of those guys have a chance to be special as they continue to grow uh, within the program. I know some freshmen can be ready to play early on. Others are sort of projections down the road. How, how do you distinguish between the two? When you look at a guy, evaluate whether he's a guy that can play early or, or it's going to need a little while. Well, again, like I tell all the guys during the recruiting process, you know, we don't decide who start. They do, you know. So it's just really based on their body of work and the consistency and consistency in which they do it, you know. Because you can have some good days, you know, and obviously there are going to be some bad days. But just how many days can they string together? They're obviously positive, you know. Are they continuing to get better? Are they continuing to work? Those are the um, characteristics that will decide, you know, how much playing time a guy gets. And that's not necessarily just for the freshmen, but that's for the sophomores or juniors or, you know, even some of the guys who, you know, had a big role last year and is hoping to get a bigger role. So, you know, everything is based on consistency, you know, and like we always say, which I've said since I got here, you know, you get what you earn. You know, if those guys are doing the right things, you know, and doing it in a consistent um, manner, then those guys got an opportunity to contribute. Get the two kids from, from BYU. What have you seen thus far out of, of Gabe and Keenan? And, and what do you like about their mental makeup and what they bring to the D? Yeah, but both those guys have been awesome. You know, they're obviously both experienced guys. You know, Gabe, you know, from the back end perspective, um, he's very calm. You know, he has a great demeanor about him, um, extre extremely smart. Um, so far, you know, he's been everything that we want him to be. Um, as far as KP goes, you know, just I actually love this kid. You know, he's, he's just a, a guy that's, you know, great to be around, just the way he carries himself um, just as a young man. But then, obviously, when you get him on the field, you, you know, you understand why he's played so many games. So uh, we're excited about both guys. You know, we think they both have, you know, an opportunity to contribute to our program. And um, obviously, if they continue to grow, you know, their, their roles will be determined. Coach, with the uh, freshmen, do you try to – uh, kind of uh, spoon feed them, or do you throw everything at them and see what they can absorb? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. I, I think the way the way we're built right now, you know, going into year three, you know, those guys don't really have the luxury of just you know being spoon fed. You know, they're they're learning at the same pace that the veterans are learning. Um, so yeah, in, in some ways that can be tough on freshmen, but I think in the long term, you know, it's going to speed it up and get those guys an opportunity to be able to contribute this year. So um, no, we're we're not slowing down at all. You know, we're throwing a lot at them and. You know, the more they can retain, the more we'll continue to throw at them. But, you know, it's only been obviously two days. But, you know, so far they seem to have a pretty good grasp on what we're trying to get accomplished. you got an influx of, of new guys, obviously, in the secondary. How much do you cross-train with those guys? We saw Christian, uh, or Christian Charles looks like he's working at safety. How, how much do you move around those guys in spring? Or is it one of those, to kind of piggyback what all Jimmy said, you want them to learn one spot before you start moving them into in the cross training world. Yeah, it's not really a one size fit all, you know, answer. I mean, you know, I think it's a lot based on the kid and you know what what he's done. You know, you, you use Christian Charles as an example. You know, when we first got here, Christian actually played safety for us. So, you know, him having an ability to play boundary safety, field safety, obviously with the experience that he gathered, you know, last year playing corner. Uh, we feel like we can move him around to a lot of different spots to give him a great opportunity, you know, to continue to carve out a role for himself. Um, as it relates to the freshmen, um, you know, we try to be a little bit more um, deliberate with our approach with those guys, you know, giving them an opportunity to learn one of the positions, you know, and once they show that they can obviously master that spot, then we start to move those guys around a little bit. So the playbook is going to be thick enough, you know, that we really want them to focus on one specific position. And then obviously when they, once they gather that, we'll obviously move them around, you know, accordingly.
We were out there obviously with the, for the first few periods today. Uh, Arion had, had an interception out there. What 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 did you like about his mental makeup? That that and, and athleticism, that combination. And do you feel like he's someone who this spring could really elevate him into being a, you know, a guy that can hit fall camp running? Yeah, I mean, I, I think obviously anytime you get a chance to invest, and he has 15 opportunities to do that, just like all of those guys. But but I would tell you about him, him as a as a person. Just once again, just a high character kid. You know, has a lot of um, you know pride in what he does. You know, he's extremely bright. You know, and like you said, the athleticism you can't hide. So, I mean, I was really pleased with the instincts that he showed today in coverage. I think a lot of time, you know, for linebackers, you know, typically when they're coming out of high school, they're, 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 they're guys that just come off the edges or, you know, guys that, you know, are just thumpers inside. But, you know, for you guys that seen him play in high school, you know, tremendous running back, obviously, you know, blossomed as a linebacker. So he's got really good instincts. Uh, and like I said, I was pleased with what he showed in coverage today. So uh, he's, he's definitely trending in the right direction. I've heard you talk a lot about your philosophy in coaching, adapting, stopping the run first, this sort of thing. I don't know if I've ever asked you about your philosophy in recruiting. Is there one specific trait or, or a certain number of traits you're looking for in recruiting? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of it is by position, you know, specific sometimes. But, but I think overall makeup, you know, you obviously want guys that are tough, you know, guys that are athletic, you know. And, and when I say tough, it's not just physically but mentally, you know. How, how, how much of a competitor are they? You know, we, we, I personally like, you know, guys that play multiple sports, you know, guys that love to compete. Uh, those things are, you know, to me sometimes it seems to be a, a dying art. You know, but anytime you can have a guy that maybe runs track, wrestles, you know, basketball, things of that nature, you know, they're just used to competing no matter what the arena is. So to me, that, that competition piece and being able to compete is a big one. But obviously size, toughness and athleticism is, you know, things that we that we um, cherish as well. How are you hoping to use these spring practices to really shape the identity that you want this defense to be? Yeah, we're, we're investing and we're building. You know, we, we, we try to, you know, talk daily about, you know, the choices that we make, you know, putting us in a position to have the outcome that we desire. So, um, you know, it's, it's a long spring. You know, we obviously got two days in, but so far those guys are really working their tails off to, you know, because they understand what's at stake. You know, sometimes when you think about 15 opportunities, like, well, I got time to get better. We don't see it that way. You know, we're in a, in, in a fight and a race to try to be as good as we can be, as fast as we can be. And, you know, our kids, our kids particularly the guys that have been here, obviously understand that mantra. So, uh, yeah, it's just one of those days. You know, we're trying to be one and know every day, and um, I think our kids understand that, and that's how we're working. Uh, Coach, looking at a guy like Jordan Matthews, that, that cornerback position, how, how tough is it to come in and, and learn as a freshman? What are some of the biggest challenges for, for those guys coming up to this level, and, and how has he kind of handled that going back to bowl practices to, uh, or this offseason so far? Yeah, like I said earlier, all those guys are, are really doing a great job and just, you know, with their preparation and, and, and understanding what to do. You know, but obviously you step up in class, you know, when you, when you, when you come to the collegiate level and, you know, you're not, you're not the fastest guy. Um, like a lot of these guys were on their respective teams and you know Jordan's no different but the thing that I love about him he's a super competitor like a lot of those guys you know he's got good size he obviously can run um, so he, he's, he's a guy that we're not concerned about in terms of the stage being too big it's just working on his craft daily which he's doing so we, we think he has a chance to be a special player here along with some of the other guys. Coach I know the only stat that matters is winning but do you nope, look ain't at... no but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go ahead. Do you look at uh, rushing yards per game, passing yards per game, third down defense? Do you look at that and say, hey, we've got to get better in these areas? Yeah, you, you always try to look at, you know, ways that you need to improve. But, but ultimately, you know, like I tell guys all the time, you know, you, you, you play, you know, we obviously have a style and play that we want to play with that we think gives us the best opportunity to be successful. You know, what are we trying to take away? I think someone asked me earlier, yeah, we want to stop the run. Now, what does that look like? Those are high percentage throws, too, on early downs. We count that in the run game. But to me, you want to be able to, you know, take away the explosive plays. You know, to me, that's a critical factor in success. Obviously, when any time you can make a team one-dimensional, you know, it puts you in a win situation as well. Um, but, the, but the third thing, to be quite honest, which is what you said earlier, you know, are you getting off the field? You know, I think, um, I think we're top 25 in the country, you know, in stop rate. You know, obviously, you know, when, if you're just talking statistically, you know, people will say, well, you weren't as quite good in the passing game. Well, no, we weren't, but we were good where it needed to be, and that's getting our tails off the field. You know, and that's what that's the bottom line of football. Don't let them score. Get off the field. Give the offense a chance to be good. And like I said, we're top 25 in doing that. You know, our goal is obviously to be number one, but our real goal is to win. You know, so whatever that takes is what we're going to do. 
What are some of the things that you want your freshmen to learn from the older guys on the defense, things that could really benefit them as they develop this spring? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, that's, that's, that's a big question, um, you know, because it's a lot of things, but it's, it's related to football, you know, just again, you know, how we go about our business, being able to manage, you know, the highs, you know, and obviously work through the lows. I think sometimes you can get comfortable when you have some success, and I think sometimes when, you know, things don't quite go the way you want them to go, you know, guys tend to drop their heads. So our veterans understand, you know, we play from, you know, one snap lives, you know, period. You know, once that snap is over, we start over again. So if they can teach them that skill, I think it'll bode well for most of the freshmen. With all the, you bring back Warren Burrell, obviously adding to, the, to that already the veterans that played this past season at corner, all those newcomers. How much of a sense of urgency is there at that position in particular because you have so many guys uh, that, that look like they're maybe capable of competing to, to sort of identify who you want to focus on going into fall camp? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a sense of urgency all over our defense. And I know that sounds cliche, but, you know, that's just how it is. You know, when you continue to recruit and recruit at a high level, you like to think the guys that you're bringing in are going to push the guys that are here. Only going to make them better or obviously give these freshmen an opportunity to play. So is it great having a bunch of guys back on the back end? Absolutely. You know, because competition is, you know, one of the, the, the best things going. You know, everybody wants to, to be the best, but when you don't know, when you don't have anybody pushing you, sometimes that can be challenging. So um, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, it, it's good to have this urgency that we have right now with 15 practices. And, you know, obviously we think the world of Burrell, you know, as he's gotten healthy. Um, but we obviously got a bunch of guys, too, that are hungry to try to prove what they can do. So, I mean, it's healthy. It's healthy for any team, and obviously it's healthy for our back end. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.